Hey, my name is Will. Welcome to a new video on Travel Television. Today we are going to talk about clicker games, uh, precisely how to build a clicker game. Um, this is my final result, actually. I'm going to link it down in the description so you can try to play it. I hope in this video I get as far as to explain how to actually build a clicker game, like from the basics, what you need to consider. Um, there might be another video coming out regarding safe games and um, the automatic play you see down here. Yeah, but let's see about that. Uh, I don't want to go too much into detail how to actually build HTML and CSS in this video. It is more about how the systematics of clicker games work because I assume uh, if you look for like content like this, you probably already know how to build HTML and CSS. But even if not, I might like create a video like down the line uh, how to actually like build up uh, HTML, CSS, SVG and JavaScript. Uh, but yeah, let's see. So let's get into it. And this game, you actually farm coins, um, or can farm coins. Uh, if we have enough, let's see. We can convert to cash. We can build out our setup. We can buy energy, so our setup can actually run, uh, which in turn will generate coins. Then we can convert again. We can buy more energy. And eventually, uh, if we have enough money, we actually can even activate autoplay down here. But yeah, maybe try it out yourself, uh, maybe have fun with it. Uh, it should be fully mobile playable, so you could play it on the go as well. And it should also uh, keep track of time passed, even if you don't play. So yeah, have fun with it. Okay, so a few days before I actually started coding, which took me about like three hours or something, because it isn't that complicated to build, uh, I actually wanted to lay out the, the graphic vision I wanted to see in the game. So I built a bunch of SVGs, animated them uh, as I wanted uh, to place in the game. Uh, after that, I actually got into like real life planning. I draw, I like you use freeform for that. So I draw like uh, how the markup should look, how the graphics will look, what features I want to see. And after that, I get right into coding actually. So um, the preparation is actually the biggest part. Uh, the coding is like a little, yeah, less like lengthy because yeah, after that, you know what you want to build. Uh, for this game even, it is like not that complicated to build a clicker game because the systematic behind the game is quite easy. Um, so it is even more important to have like a real vision you want to have in the game, but what um, basically topic you want to build about, what uh, visuals you want to see, how the function should work, if it, if it is interesting enough, how it should scale and all like that. So um, put a little bit more effort into the planning um it will make your life easier like on the road so i usually start with building out the markup uh, filling a lot around like how it looks how it feels um does it like fit um so i try a lot of stuff before i actually get into a lot of the logic um i just figured out for myself that this is something i can work with easier than actually getting into the logic and after that building like um yeah the thing I want to see. I'm not sure if it is maybe about the the whole motivation thing. So if you see what you're actually building for, it is more like entertaining for yourself, building the project. Um, so yeah, I get a lot of in the markup first, uh, build all the stuff out I want to see, uh, how I imagined it, it would look, how um, the things work together, how um, yeah, several aspects of the game should uh, work together. Uh, and this is basically what you can see here. I mean, it is quite a little bit speed up, but um, it is like just uh, writing HTML. It is just uh, using uh, lit HTML actually for the components. I'm using web components. Um, the reason for that is I'm a big fan of web components. I even use them like uh, barebone vanilla, but I choose uh, lit HTML for cases where I have a little bit more intensive data handling. Um, the reason for that being that um, I want to have like the two-way data binding without really thinking about what values or views I need to update when values change. So I use lit HTML for that, but you can use yeah practically anything. You can even go vanilla and, and build it yourself. Um, but for the most part, it is easier to use something that doesn't um, require like a whole framework, which basically just implements the sugar function you need. So that's what I'm doing here. So maybe another like bit which is mm, maybe relevant if you want to build it your own. So in my case, in this game, I use the real circumstance of energy usage. 
So um, it is sometimes real helpful to get into a little bit of research how uh, expensive, for example, uh, energy is, how large like the, the biggest energy storage is and stuff like that, just to have like a, a little bit of a real world association in the game because it makes it feel a little bit more fun to play if you um, can imagine that it actually works like that. So in my case, for example, since I wanted to build uh, around the, the concept of, all right, I have like electric components and they use energy. I wanted to have like the component of energy storage that you need to um, yeah, fill up again if you, if you emptied it to be a thing. So I investigated a little bit how big actually is the realistic like size of storage for energy, how expensive should the energy be, um, how much energy actually like the components drain off the source and stuff like that. So to keep it a little bit more real in the game and make it interesting to play. Okay, so clicker games basically just have two uh, like modes of action. You have one where the button does something, uh, like for example, if you exchange coins in our case, um, the, the coin exchange should happen immediately when you press the button. And then you have like a separate thing where you have like a, a background running function. In our case, we use the interval function uh, from your JavaScript because in the browser you can just use something like that um, to actually track the increase of coins uh, and the decrease of energy. Uh, you can also use multiple functions for that. Um, I, in my case, use multiple functions because I don't want to have the energy drainage in the same interval as um, like the coin generation. Uh, the reason for that is also, again, uh, something real life uh, dependent because in my mind, a coin generation is like a computational task. So it, it could happen in any millisecond, but the energy drainage is like determined by a certain thing. So you usually um like you use energy like all the time but like for example you have a counter in your house that actually uh, checks or, or yeah make it visual how much energy you use it is usually like that they have like one certain amount they display so i just want to have it like here the same way that there are basically like chunks that uh, decrease um the whole storage uh, aside the whole like real life circumstances you want to build in your game to make it a little bit more real uh, and aside the whole vis visual presentation how it should look like what fancy elements you want to have what fancy effects you want to use and there's also another topic you really need to pay attention to if you want to build like a clicker game uh, especially um, and that is data visibility so you as the creator of the game know a lot about how the game works so how, you know what the formula is for example um, how much energy is drained from the source you know uh, how expensive it is in, in our case to exchange coins and stuff like that but you also need to make a bunch of those information visible to the player so he or she can actually derive some input what is a good next move to do and what actually uh, a action have has has an impact like of the overall state of the game so you need to make this visual and you also need to make it visual in a way that you gr can grasp information easily like in our case for example i created a number formatting function that actually makes the visual a little bit more pleasing and i i think at least uh, that, so that you don't see like uh numbers like spelled out but you have like the short notation like you have for example everything above uh, a thousand is like k everything above uh, a million is like m and stuff like that so you work with relatively low numbers and like um, the indicators how um, uh, how much zeros you have and I'm, I'm sure how to call it um, which is quite important i think to make the game not over bloated with information so it is like a fine line you walk where how much information you actually present to the to the player so he or she knows what to do or how the state is and what you keep uh, hidden so there's a little bit of mystery and a little bit of tryout factor and also all of those informations you want to display in a way that it makes sense um, to see it and uh, make it easier to grasp what you see without having like for example to count zeros or something. 
And maybe the last thing um, we should talk about or that you should consider if you want to build a clicker game is actually balancing the game. So a lot of stuff is uh, generational, like for example, how much um, coins you generate is based on some value, in our case, the level yeah, multiplied by some value, for example, um, for like the certain uh, component you updated. Um, the energy uh, price is maybe stable, but the coin exchange it might be dynamic and stuff like that. So this is all stuff you need to keep in mind and balance out over the time. So don't expect that you have like the perfect um, formula um, like for yeah increasing the prices or increasing the generation right from the get-go. This is something you need to evolve. All right, um, that's it for today. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, have fun playing the game. Uh, see you next time.